There it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's him. That's him. That's him. Oh my gosh. He's under the dock. Give him some slack. Give him some slack. There we go. Fight him. Oh my gosh. That's him. That's him. What's going on everybody and welcome to Uncut, the series on my channel where the cameras are recording, everything is on film, including the good and the bad, and I'm just going bass fishing and teaching you guys everything I learn along the way. The body of water I'm fishing today is Jermar Lake in Van Alstine, Texas, a 10 acre lake that is part of the private water fishing network of lakes. This lake was stocked in 2007 with several species of bluegill and sunfish, as well as plenty of bass, with the lake record being almost 10 pounds. The fishing today was absolutely on fire, as well as my skin, because because it is hot outside. It is late August here in Texas. The fishing is tough. But in this video, I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about fishing in super hot conditions. And we're gonna do my 300,000 subscriber giveaway by giving away a brand new mock jacked bait casting reel, not even available to the general public yet, to one of you guys watching this video. I am super pumped for this episode. Let's get to the fishing. So let the bass fishing begin. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say about this time of the year with it being as hot as it is, is that the morning bite is incredibly crucial. I've talked about this in videos before, but if you are not getting out there early, I'm talking about before the sun starts to rise, you are missing out on potential bites because as, uh, as you know, the sun goes down, the water starts to cool off just a little bit here in the, in the summer, late summer, even early fall. And in Texas, man, it is hot. It's been like 117 degrees every day. Oh, got a fish. Oh, had a bite. I had a bite, keep the frog there. As I was saying, it's been really, really hot. And so when that sun goes down, the water temperature finally gets a chance to maybe not cool off, but at least not get any hotter. And so because of that, it allows the shallow ecosystem to turn on at least to some degree during the nighttime. So you have a really short bite window, unless of course you have some overcast conditions, maybe a, a slight cold front of some kind you've got a very short time window to catch fish. So that's why the morning bite is incredibly crucial. So here at this lake, let's kind of talk about conditions real quick. We've got, ah man, I always tell you guys, I gotta know these grasses. I know we definitely have some, uh, some milfoil and we have whatever this kind of leafy stuff is. I will name it down below. Whatever this kind of grass is, it lines basically the entire bank of the pond. We have bank access to, I'd say 40% maybe 35% of, uh, of the pond, which should be good enough for the amount of time that I wanna to fish today before it just gets too hot. So what I'm doing, and I've talked about this before on the channel, is I'm just really covering water. I don't think many people out there truly understand the, the term covering water, and that is you are making single cast over a whole area, expecting, you know what, if there's a, an active fish there, He's gonna bite it, and if not, he's not. So I'm just gonna move on after one cast through the area, maybe two. So I made one cast right there. I'm gonna make a second cast with top water. Oh my goodness, well, get a backlash. Again, I haven't cast this reel in over a month, so I need to get some of the lower loops out. Throwing that one back in. I'm just not happy with that cast. And get the, here's the grass. Whatever this is, looks like spinach. We're gonna call it spinach grass. There we go. And when it comes to picking which top water to use in terms of pond fishing, I know you know what lake fishing as well, I'll include all you guys in there, is that you really wanna pick the top water that is most fishable for your situation. So if you can get away with treble hooks on your top water, so your poppers, plopper, walking baits, do that. I have found the hookup ratio is going to be better. Any fish that slaps at it, you at least have a chance of, of hooking that fish. Whereas a topwater frog, they've really got to eat the thing and your hook set has to be immaculate. There we go. There we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on now. Come on now. Get in here. Water ski him in. Let's go. As I was saying, hook set's got to be immaculate and that one there was pretty dang good. Hey, hey. Good morning. Welcome to the uncut pop and pad perch eating fish. All right, skinny summertime bass. Looks like you need to eat yourself a few more meals, but I appreciate you. And so that is why I have picked the topwater frog 
because I have a grass line here that yes, I could throw a, 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 you know, a moving bait that has treble hooks, but I'm gonna have trouble once I get to the edge of that grass getting that bait snagged. So that's why I'm going with the frog. I love the pop and pad perch. It's a great frog because it has a popping action to it, but it doesn't actually inhibit it from going in and around cover. So that's why I picked this one. And you can tell, I got a bite there, made one cast back, didn't catch one, and so it's not worth my time anymore. I'm gonna keep on walking down the bank. And you'll notice I don't have my second camera with me right now. That is because I am in speed mode. I told you guys, we are covering, oh gosh, should be one right here. Should be one right here. A, a little tiny bluegill. Looked like it was struggling on top of the water. And a bass is chasing it. But I don't see him. It's so dang crucial right now to use the most of your morning time. And I can tell we're not going to have single dang cloud today, so... It's not like top water time is going to be extended. And this goes for grassy bodies of water and totally clean bodies of water. You've got, oh, here we go. There we go, buddy. There we go. There we go. Yes, sir. Come on now. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. You, my friend, are not as big as your first buddy. Oh, what was that? Thought I felt some kind of spider on me. Oh, look at that though. Look at that, two hooks. Roof of the mouth, healthier. Thank you, friend. And my lens good? Looks like we're clean. Sick, sick folks at home. That's what I'm talking about. That's why you come into private water fishing. Because at least I'm hedging my bets that if it is hot summer, the bite is tough, at least there's more fish in these bodies of water. That's what, that's why you'll see a lot of YouTubers that fish at private bodies of water. And, and you know me, I travel across the country. I have fished at tough public bodies of water my whole life. So I've proven that I can do that. But when it comes to catching fish on camera, it's just hard sometimes to make good content you guys can enjoy and I can teach. If it's on, you know, a public body of water, a public, you know, park pond that has bad vegetation, nothing but snot grass. So, that's why I come out here. The Hunter Pond series is really where you guys see me fish those types of places. But I am pleased so far. I can already tell it's getting hot though, believe it or not. It's only 7, 10 in the morning and it's getting steamy. Also possibly because I'm, I'm catching fish. But one thing I can tell already, and I'll kind of show this on a drone shot here that I take later, is the, it obviously gets shallower the closer I get towards the north side of the pond, the creek side. And you can tell that because the grass starts to top out a little bit farther out from the bank than it did back there where I parked the truck um, by all the riprap rock. So that tells me it gets shallower so I can make casts that are actually further out from the bank. Back this direction, I could tell there was a pretty distinct line of where the grass stopped. So any cast that I would make further than that line, I'm not gonna say is useless, but it definitely isn't as, as smart, isn't as time efficient, especially during this time period, as a, a cast right along the edge or right on the inside. But out here, I can tell there's a little bit more open water in terms of like open vegetation. And so I can make casts that are quite a bit more fan, fan-like instead of direct. Now this also does mean that my fishing slows down a little bit. And I'm also seeing as I walk, hopefully y'all can see that there, a few fit, oh, uh-oh. Oh gosh, dang it. Ah, lost it, man. Man, 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 man. So in this, oh gosh, there's one. They are, they are absolutely turning on right now, folks. The fish are on the chew. I told you guys, these fish will spend all night and early morning feeding up shallow. And I don't know if they've got some like mental timetable or clock that runs out near sunrise and they just decide we have to feed now, our time is running out. So there's almost always a good 
shallow sunrise bite. Come on now. Come on. Give it to me. Give it to me. Okay. Nothing there. I think the one that I missed, I stung him, which means that my, my hooks... Look at that. I just cast right there, far out, and there, a fish spooked where my braid hit the water. So there's definitely fish out there on the grass and in here, which means I've got to fish a little slower than I want to. Ideally, I like to just hit high percentage places and keep moving. But they don't seem shy today. They seem like if they're going to eat, they're going to eat. So uh, that gives me the, the willingness to want to fish a little bit faster. Keep the frog moving. I think people don't realize how fast bass are. Doesn't it's not like your frog's gotta be sitting there for 15 seconds for you know to tantalize them into eating. They can pretty much track this thing down and, and eat it pretty fast. You'll actually see a lot of guys reel their frog totally in, giving it pauses every once in a while. And then if a fish misses. You can throw right back there and a lot of times get that fish. But I am liking this so far. Hopefully y'all are too. Hey, a lot of you guys watch the channel and you might not realize you are unsubscribed. Oh, there's a nice one. Oh, and that's the biggest thing I can ask you guys to do is to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more content like this. Uh-oh, get in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. hey -o. Pop and pad perch to the face. You know, being subscribed costs you nothing. And it helps me out a ton as long as you guys, you know, keep watching the content. Now, my goodness, this guy, let me tell you something. He got hooked. He got hooked on the frog. Thanks, buddy. I got to give you a toss. I apologize. See ya. Had to get him back out there to where he belonged. And that fish came way out there in the middle but even though it was a far cast in the middle i guarantee you i wasn't in, in more than two to three feet of water because again that's the slope of the bottom and i can tell that by all the vegetation topping out let's go i'm gonna restart the clip i do that periodically just to don't oh, oh gosh do that periodically just to make sure that my sd card doesn't get corrupted or anything Okay, frog is clean. Come on now, come back for it. Little tiny twitches. I know a bass is in the area. He just ate, I see wakes. I see wakes all around me. Come on now. Oh my goodness, they are so active this morning. And in this scenario, I will not keep moving. I will make a few repeated casts toward this little grass patch where I got that bite. Yep, it is, it is. I know I'm catching fish and I'm being active, but it's hot. I'm gonna tell you guys all about the transition I make, but when it comes to switching from this style of fishing to what I consider slow style, it's pretty quick. As soon as that sun pops out, I make that transition, at least if the, if the, if the body of water allows. Let's see. Anything else I can teach you guys during this time? I guess top water. Top water's big. I think I'm going to have a video releasing very soon talking about, I think, what every person should have as a top water combo. And is this the one I'm throwing? No, this is my frog combo. Uh, as far as mock goes. I do think everybody should have a top water combo and you'll see what that is in my video. So stay tuned. Again, you want to be subscribed because if you're not subscribed, you don't get, you know, immediate access to see all these things. And that's why I said a lot of you guys might think you're subscribed because... Oh, there's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Reeled in all my slack, and then as soon as I get him to the surface, water ski him in, baby. A lot of people out there, oh, why do you why do you fight your fish so fast? Enjoy the fight. No, if you enjoy the fight, how do you know if they're gonna get in? Thank you, my friend. 
water skied him across the, the top of the water here. The frog got him, got him good. Come on now. Thank you, friend. Beautiful. Bunch of nice two pounders so far. Also, for all you who are like, stop throwing the fish. Brother, they throw trout. They drop trout out of an airplane in the mountains. So the bass can survive a little five foot throw back into the water. Let me tell you something. Okay, so now we have a little bit of bank here that's not super accessible via, via the shore. I'm gonna walk down here, make a cast into really shallow water since I've seen, I've seen bass scurry out of the shallows. Nothing there, let me make another one right here. Again, I do this before I get as close to the bank as I wanna get. That way I don't ruin a potential, potential fish. Dang it! It kind of felt small. The bite, the bite was not a was not a big suck. It was more of just a splash. Still a bummer. Still hate to miss fish. But that goes to show you. Sometimes they're even shallower than you think they are. Because I only made that cast because I was using my eyes and noticed that fish had been there. Here he is. Fish had been busting shallow. Making wakes. Now it is easier on a, a morning like this where it's dead calm. Way easier to see what kind of activity is going on. Wherever, where, where, gosh, I can't speak. Whereas if it's windy, not quite as easy. Man, what a beautiful morning. It is, it's already getting steamy. Gonna have to change tactics here pretty soon. That's why I'm covering water fast. I think, you know, most people show up to the pond and all they do is get their favorite lure and heck, they might get there at sunrise. Maybe they had a good morning. Their alarm went off. Your, uh, your kids were sleeping, though your wife was still asleep. The chores were done last night and you're like, you know what, I can go fishing this morning. So you get up and you go out and you get out there and, and everything's great up to this point, but you pick the wrong lure. You're like, man, I was catching them the other day at, at, at noon on a worm, so I'm gonna start with a worm. Well, that's not a bad idea to fish with a worm if that's how you're catching them, but that morning bite is so crucial just to cover as much water as humanly possible. And there's still a whole bunch of back by the dam back there that I haven't covered yet. And I'm gonna hit that last before I switch to um, a soft plastic or a jig. I just wanna fish as much of this ultra shallow stuff as I can again, because the sun is coming up. As the Bill Dance song goes, sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And then we all forget the words after that part. Get the water out of my frog. Oop, I just heard, I heard a pop somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm already seeing a decrease in activity, even just in like the, the 15 minutes since I first uh, started catching them right down there. That as the sun is popping up, these fish know it's getting hot. They don't have any eyelids. So they're, they're, they're seeing this sunlight and they say, nah, -uh, I'm good. Let me get cast even further out there since I got some bites on the furthest edge so far. Check my GoPro, we good? Heck yeah. I'm gonna angle down a little bit. I felt like I've been a little too high. Oh man, what a beautiful day. There was a song back in the day that my mom used to play in the car on the way to school like every day even if we had like kids like friends of mine carpooling with us it was good morning by toby mac and mandisa is that a fish no yes no he missed it he missed it he missed it sometimes they'll take your frog down but they only have it by like the skirts and so i'll reel down and check and it just kind of felt gummy but it wasn't like a a big bite 
and that's most likely what happened. Let me get another cast in there. But yeah, that song was uh, the anthem of my mornings in middle school and early high school. Some good old Christian, Christian radio rap right there. Rap is a loose, rap's a very loose term there. Toby Mac, I wouldn't say he's a rapper, but it was what we had. It was what old, old Tyler had, his mom in the car. All right. Now, I do think, looking at this here, I think they've actually mowed this part down. Oh, gosh, dang it. I'm still getting bites out there. So one thing, yeah, one thing I'm going to do now that I've noticed that is I'm going to only cast, just for the next few minutes, out to way out there. Oh, it was not a good cast. Holy cow. Just that one fast. I'm only going to cast out to where I've been getting bites. There's tons of water here that I'm skipping. And once I get out of the, the deeper strike zone that I'm getting bites at, I'm going to reel in fast and make another cast. Again, because efficiency is the name of the... Oh, oh my gosh. I can't, hook the, I can't hook these fish. They're like slapping at it. But they're definitely out there. Makes me, it makes me want to get the fluke right now. Like the caffeine shad would definitely work. It would probably hook these fish a little better than the frog does. But good grief, this Mach 2 absolutely, sm well, not smokes, absolutely launches frogs out there. It can launch. That's why you got to have a longer rod if you want to get a good hook set with a frog. You really got to gather in that line and set the hook hard. It's probably why most people miss their frog bites because they get a bite at the end of the cast. Gosh, dang it, man. What's going on? I'm waiting. I'm waiting and everything. Ugh. I'm going to wait even longer. I'm going to give these boys like two seconds. Man. Every time I make an overhand cast, it's great, and then I do my my old traditional sidearm. Didn't work. I am losing time. I want to get over there real bad before I lose the, the shade on that area. Oh, man. I gotta go faster. I gotta go faster. I'd say I've already had a good successful morning though oh my goodness i must be getting all small bites out there because this is not the usual or the or the cast is just too far and i i can't i can't get a good cast on them although i'm also now realizing that one of these fi oh, that's probably why one of these fish pulled my oh dang he pulled the nose uh, or the the ring out of the nose. Oh, this frog! This frog is probably almost done. I've I've had this frog for months. I was wondering when it was going to break, and I think that time was uh, was today. Yep, he dang he dang pulled the the ring out that holds the holds the hook. All right, well, I guess we'll get all the use out of this frog I can. Try to catch a few more on it. All right, let's see. Oh my goodness, man. It's like it's like my my line knows that I'm in a hurry trying to catch fish here uncut. That it's like, oh yeah. Now is now a great time for a backlash? Thought so. I thought so. Might as well give it to you. And this is a bad one. This is not not a good one. Oh my gracious. Oh my. Well, for the sake of uh, y'all's viewing pleasure, we'll see you after I get this out. Well, folks, for the sake of getting this video going again, I, I just got to cut this backlash out. Just reeled in my frog. I'm going to go back to the truck, and I might as well get a new frog. This one's caught a lot of fish over its lifetime. So I'm going to kind of give up on this area over here. Missed a few anyways. I want to go fish this this uh I want to go fish the dam with top water. And so I'm going to get a new frog. I'm gonna get a new reel. Even though it looks nice, 
I just reeled over the backlash, so that is not uh, not the outcome we wanted. But this thing was absolutely nasty. It seems like backlashes on braid, when you really get them bad, are horrible. It's like resin lines. I can almost always get a backlash out, but when you when you bury your line so deep in these things, even a even a YouTube pro like myself still get some backlashes that I gotta I gotta cut out so we're gonna tie ourselves on a new combo at least a new reel because I don't think I have enough braid left on this reel once I cut it out and we'll get back to fishing and we are back got ourselves a, a whole new reel I had an extra mock crush bait caster sitting around the truck so put that on my 7.3 heavy I've got here now they definitely don't match you know here at here at mock nation we try to make our combos super slick and cool and orange and green are definitely not colors that go well together but i'm going to do those i'm going to go all the way down to where there's still some sort of shade so i've got to go down this little overflow here and back up this lake here has two different fish feeders and I met the uh, I met the owner. His name was Jerry. It's probably where the Jer and Jermar comes from about this lake. He told me he caught a two and a half pounder off this feeder yesterday. And again, that's what makes private water fishing lakes so good is that they they really listen. The owners listen to the private water fishing folks when they say, "Hey, your lake needs a feeder." or your lake needs grass, or your lake needs carp. It's got too many grass. The PWF guys are really, really smart about fisheries management, that kind of stuff. And so they're gonna professionally manage these lakes here for fish catching success. Make sure you guys as members know that you're fishing at a place that's got some good access. All right, getting back over to the corner here. We got some cows. You probably can't see them on the chest mountain, but we got some cows. Uh, I'm worried about snakes and spiders. All right, great. Yeah, this reel definitely doesn't have enough. Doesn't have enough braid. Gonna have to sling this thing. That's a bait caster tip for you. If you want to get the best casting distance with your bait caster, you gotta have a full spool of line. And I'm realizing this does not have nearly as full of a spool as I would want. It'll work, but I'm not getting the, the casting distance I want that I had out of the Mach 2. But it's all right. We're running low on this time period anyways. I'm not even seeing hardly any activity back here, even though it's still shady. Makes me think it's almost time for my bottom baits. Whew. My brow is getting sweaty. Probably can't see that, but I just wiped my forehead and whew. Good grief, man. These fish have gone, maybe my hook set is just off. That could be the deal. Comment below, does my hook set look janky? I kind of feel like it does. Get out of there. Catch me that fish, please. There we go. Yes, sir. Okay, I just had to just had to lean back and give it to him. Get in here. Get in here. Yes, sir. Water ski in. Ugh. Great. Thank you, my friend, for proving to me that I can still catch a fish after I just lost a bunch in a row. Get out of there. Jeez. I tell you what, though, if you're fishing a topwater frog and you really get the hook set good, that fish is not coming off. Hey, see you, buddy? I really give you a toss that time. Get you past all these rocks. Oh, man. Time's running low. Ah, it need to cast far. This reel doesn't have enough line. That is like, that is like a tangible way to show you guys that not having a full spool line, again, this is basically the same reel, 
the Crush and the Mach 2 don't really have that many different characteristics besides maybe a bearing or two and the, the color. And I just cannot cast as far with this one. So, it is the amount of line I have on the spool. All right, I'm gonna work my way down to the rocks and I like the path down here the best. Uh-oh, the feeder just turned on. That feeder over there just turned on. Hmm, I wanna make some cast that direction then. Because if the bluegill, I think that feet, one of the feeders just went off. If the bluegill are about to start popping over there, you can't tell me the bass don't know too. At least I thought I heard something. Maybe not. Oh my goodness, y'all, it's so hot. It's so hot outside, holy cow. And it's only, what time is it? I gotta show you guys. It is only 7.28. And the sun behind me is just, is just burning my neck. Like I already have to put my hood up, my Afco hood here. Oh my gosh. Too dang hot, folks. I'm trying to cast in open water. Don't even care. I don't know how deep it is. Don't even know how deep it is. Hope y'all have been enjoying the uncuts. I know I have. Again, subscribe if you haven't. If you like this content, it's free. Hit the like button, it's free. All the, all the YouTuber talk, you know? Like, comment, it all, it all helps. It all stinking helps. I think I'm gonna get me out of. I think I'm gonna get me out of big worm and go to go to dragon. Dragon that worm. Cause this ain't working no more. Oh, the top water bite seems to have ceased. I'm gonna make one cast back this way towards these tulies. See if a fish that I missed. Over there wants to come back for it. Now a lot of private water fishing lakes have bank access like this, but you can't access the whole thing. So a kayak or a John boat is probably the best way to go for this club here. And if you want to join private water fishing, it's here in Texas and Oklahoma. You can come in from Louisiana, come in from Arkansas or New Mexico and uh, They've got different membership tiers. Let them know I sent you. It's probably some kind of drop-down menu letting letting PWF know that you watched my channel. And it's, I mean, let's be honest here. The cost of bass fishing, if you're going to go, let's say you're going to go to a public lake, of filling up the boat, filling up the truck, buying tackle for this specific lake, fishing crowded areas with other people, it all costs money, all adds up. When you can have private water fishing, a lake all to yourself for the entire day. Nobody's stealing your spots. The lakes are professionally managed. So it just, you give yourself a much higher percentage of catching fish and having a good day. And honestly, that's the goal for most of us. We wanna take our kids out fishing, our grandkids out fishing. We just wanna have a good time. Just take ourselves out fishing, have a good time. And of course you can do that on public water. I'm not saying you can't. I have a great time on public water all the time. But the cost, people, all oh, private lakes cost a lot of money. No, if you get the membership, lakes are only usually less than a hundred bucks a day. It's pretty dang cheap if you consider how, how much money we spend trying to figure out public lakes. Private water fishing is actually a pretty good economic deal when you do the math, as long as you're just trying to catch fish. So again, let them know I sent you. What kind of food have we got here? We got Outback Wildlife Feeders. They told me not to touch the feeder, which of course makes me want to touch the feeder. But I will refrain, because they asked me nicely. And now the sun is higher. We'll talk a little more about conditions. Yeah, the water is crystal clear. Lots of bluegill and sunfish. I see them, they're all about that big. I'm sure there's bigger ones, but all about that big, which means the Soft plastic jerk bait's probably not a bad idea this time of the day. So actually, you know what? That's what I'm gonna go tie on right now. 
I think top water time is over. So now y'all know, get there early, cover water, throw at targets with your top water, pick the right one. And then as soon as they stop biting it, switch to something else. And it's, it's really a, it's a very fast switch from covering as much water as you can to going super, super slow. But that's the, that's the way that I think you can catch the most bass possible is if you do that, those baits in that order. And my goodness, am I getting hot. I'm gonna fish this pipe though. I definitely skipped over, skipped over this the first time I saw it. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Ooh, looks like a beautiful pond over there. I don't think that's, that's their property, but it looks beautiful. Looks nice and tranquil over there. Okay, enough dilly-dallying. It's time to get ourselves the fluke. And as I'm walking back to the truck, I see this is the feeder that went off. There are turtles and bluegill feeding everywhere on this feeder. So I'm going to kind of speed up my process here. Grab my rod sock. These are Outcast Tackle Slicks. Slicks rod, rod covers, I love them. I'll leave them linked below. Every, every angler needs rod covers. Okay, now I'm gonna get myself a Texas rig rod here. This is the Mach 1, I'm a huge fan of this combo. It's held up great, 7.2 medium heavy. I prefer a 7.2 medium for my soft plastic jerk baits, but this will do. Got to get ourselves a, a hook here. Hmm. I guess I'll go, I was going to go belly weighted, but I'll, I'll go weightless. That's fine. That's all good. And I got to find wherever in my pack here. Oh, I think I put them. I think I put them in here. Yep. Caffeine shag. Give me green pumpkin or watermelon. There we go. Watermelon red. Four inch caffeine shad, baby. Cannot be beat. I'm gonna make a fluke. It's called the fluke. That's the, the general term. Zoom. Zoom really jumped the gun there. Got the Kleenex brand name. The fluke style. I'm gonna make a fluke masterclass here soon. Really not a whole lot to it, but there's definitely a few little sneaky tricks that I could teach. Boom. Got it. And if I really feel like it's not falling fast enough to the bottom, again, rig it Texas, Texas style, uh, then I will switch. I'll find, I'm sure I've got a, a light belly weight hook in there somewhere. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Oh, you ain't got to tell me. You ain't got to tell me to throw this lure. Because I will. I definitely need to loosen up my school tension a little bit. Make sure my line is not frayed. Something felt, something felt weird there. Uh-oh. We got a fray, but it's also like 15 or 17 pound line, so not that concerned about it. Gonna flip out here next to the dang feeder. Give her some twitches. And you know what? Now that I, uh, now that I'm seeing how slow this is falling, I think I do need a, uh, I think I do need a belly weight. Well, do I? No, I don't. I don't. We're good. Let's go on this side of the feeder here. Two, three, four. Oh, looks like we have a, a fish holder here. I do know that if I catch fish under, I think it's 12 inches, the property wants me to take them out. So if I do catch any and I'm near the dock, I'm going to throw them in that thing there. It's nice of them to provide that. Gosh, there's one. There's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
this bass was taking advantage of it. Oh man, and I'm sorry, buddy, but I think, yep, I think you're the first candidate for uh, death. <laughs> so, there you go. You, my friend, get to hang out in the tank until whatever the property owner decides to do with you later. But that right there was a fish that was just hanging out around the feeder because the bait fish were there. So why would he not? And I got a backlash because I, I pitched a weightless plastic and didn't use my thumb. So that'll happen. And when you're reeling in a backlash, always put your finger on the front. Get that line tight as it comes back on there. But that's the power of this lure. And I'm not just talking for that other one. No. Here it is. Gosh! I'm not just talking around feeders and docks. Anywhere that you fish that has bluegill, the caffeine shad is just magical for. That's awesome. Thank you, buddy. Oh, we're having fun. We're having fun. Hey, we're having fun. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I see, I knew this place had more fish than I was catching on the frog. You just had to take advantage of them. Let's go. Pitch the caffeine shad. Let it slowly sink. Watch your line. I, I knew that bite was coming because I watched my line and it was going fast, which meant the fish was taking it. And then I pulled up. Fish wasn't there. He dropped it. I gave it another twitch and then I just felt the doop. And when that happens, not really even a need to check. I'll just go ahead and set the hook because this bait is light enough. They've most likely sucked it in. And I can set the hook knowing that he's probably got it. Gosh, how many casts in a row is that? Jeez, let's go, let's go. Oh my goodness, hot as heck. And you, my friend, have earned yourself a trip to uh, Treasure Island. By Treasure Island, I mean the tank. All right. That's the, that's the important part about managing lakes. People all the time in the bass fishing industry are, oh, I can't keep a bass. Catch and release, man. Hey, you know what? I don't disagree. For many fisheries out there, that is the best course of action, but not for every fishery. Sometimes to make bigger bass, you got to get rid of some bass. And that's what we're doing. I also need to take this with me. Pack of caffeine shads. I got three. Three fish out of one. Pretty good. I'll take that. Before the nose broke. How many fish can I catch in a row? Now, I don't think the fishing is going to be this hot everywhere else that I go, but... There's definitely a group of fish down there that are taking advantage of all these easy bluegill. And, and really, this is just a lesson in, you know, find the bait. Wherever the bluegill are, the bait fish are in your body of water, the bass are going to be somewhere near. They might not be in the mood to bite, but they are somewhere near, I can guarantee you. Now, one thing I don't like is my hook set position, but I felt like I've done a pretty decent job setting the hook backwards. Just giving it a slight twitch, let it fall. When you twitch the, the caffeine shad, it goes like this, and then it kind of glides back down. Just looks like a very tantalizing gill. Or perch show, there's one. Oh, man. Oh, man. He pulled my tail off. Probably very small. I'm gonna switch to uh, I'm gonna switch to this side. I'm gonna get a better hook set. And you'll notice I'm not getting out on the dock because a lot of these bites that I'm getting are coming basically directly underneath it. Probably bass that are sitting under the dock that are ambushing out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna potentially lose bites, lose out on bites if I go there's. It was falling. I've got to have one. I don't know. It's falling extra fast. Maybe they've gotten onto my tricks. Yeah. I think they've started to catch on. 
Now, one thing I'm going to say is that, man, we've got, we got turtles everywhere in this pond. A lot of dang turtles. A lot of dang turtles. All right, last cast over here, and then we'll start working our way back down the bank. The action around the feeder has subsided significantly since it first started going off. Probably have to use my brain more to find these fish now that the feeder bite might be dwindling. Oh man. Well, thank y'all so much for watching. Thank y'all for 300,000 subscribers. What an amazing number. I, I, I always think about it as the, as the football stadium reference. And man, I've, I have filled up three Kyle Fields. I've filled up three big houses. Filled up three of a lot of stadiums, which is, which is pretty cool with, with people that just want to learn how to catch fish. So that means a lot to me, so thank you. Like I said, we have a giveaway coming. Once I set up the big camera, we'll start talking about the giveaway and how you guys can win. It'll, it'll be the comment challenge. As you guys know, I have in, in all my uncut videos. But we'll fish a little slower. We'll get, to, we'll get to dragging a worm. I just picked up the soft plastic jerk bait because I knew that there was bluegill up shallow. And if the bass had moved off of the direct edge to uh, you know a little farther out, oh, I felt like one. At the soft plastic jerk bait, it's probably the the next best move. <laughs> but I think once it comes to hot water drag and it's the it's the worm, especially around vegetation. If I've got open bottom, I'm gonna throw a jig. Oh man, cast it out there. Let's see, I've had my, I gotta get my phone out because I feel like I had some notes of what I wanted to talk about today. That's my apps, that's not notes. There it is. Okay, a few things. Kind of housekeeping things here for you guys who are the, the big time fans. Um, I have a ministry event going on at in Longview at, ooh, what's the church? Oh man, the, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the church right now, but I will have it on the screen here. It's at 3 p.m. on Sunday, October 8th. Me and Alton Jones Jr. will be speaking. We'll be talking about pond fishing, lake fishing, electronics, tying lures, Texas rigs, really a whole bunch of little topics, um, as well as, oop, there's a fish, as well as giving away a bunch of mock combos, mocks, nice enough to, to send a bunch of combos for me and Alton to give away and then a bunch of Zebco combos. So if you want to bring your kid, I can almost guarantee that you guys are going to walk away with, a, with an old traditional Zebco brand new combo. You know, the sponsors I work with, oh, there's a fish. Oh, dang it, dang it. I had him and then I hesitated. I'll go back to that fish though. The sponsors I work with are so great. It's, they, they not only support this channel, but they also support all the events that I go to and do. And so I'm excited for this event. It'll be a good time. Come on out if you are in Northeast Texas. If you're in Dallas, come make the trip out. Again, it's a Sunday afternoon. It's a free event. There'll be vendors there. Skeeter boats will be there. You can check out all the new boats. I think Luz is also bringing their whole entire traveling uh, trailer. I could be wrong. Um, but if you want to see and, and feel and test out all the, all the Luz products, they're going to have them there. So it's going to be a really fun event. So don't make, don't make, make sure you don't miss that. Hope to meet you guys there. And then uh, in terms of just like videos coming out on the channel, y'all have been awesome. Again, it's evident that y'all are, are liking it because the, the views are doing well and the subscribers are, the subscribers are growing. There's one. Oh, my friend, you have earned, you've earned yourself a trip to the other side. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 yep. Un unluck of the draw, my friend. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, y'all been liking the videos, but there's one coming out in the next few days. If you're watching this video uh, a decent amount of time after I, uh, after I posted this video here, I've got a video coming out that I am very excited about. I visit a dog park in the video uh, to collect something at the dog park for fishing. 
Yeah, I'm just, that's all I'm gonna tell you guys right now. But, uh, oh gosh, it's a video that you're not gonna wanna miss. It is pretty dang crazy. It's my first like storytelling challenge type video I've done in a long time, and I'm definitely excited about it. So the best thing y'all could do, even if the title and thumbnail, you know, is, is different than usual, I'm gonna ask you guys who watch the channel to, uh, especially if you're watching in the next few days after this thing comes out, to, you know, when it pops up on your homepage, it'll, it'll come out Saturday morning, I believe. Um, if it pops up on your homepage, please click on it, help that click-through rate get that thumbnail click through rate good because I'm putting a ton of work into it. It's hilarious. It teaches some things, talks about fishing in a cool way. And uh, I think you're going to get a laughter out of it. So that's all I'm going to say. But if you guys could go watch that, that would be, uh, that would be cash money. And if you all have stuck around throughout my whole monologue here, I appreciate you. You guys are, uh, you guys are some of the real ones. But that's kind of what these uncuts are, to be honest. These uncuts are uh, me monologuing the whole time about fishing. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm fishing. I lost track of what I'm saying. All right, caffeine chat. I'm making cast now parallel against the, uh, the edge, the obvious edge of this grass here. But I really feel like these fish have already moved to the depths, whatever that means. Could be 10 feet out there, could be, could be, 15, 20, I'm not sure what the, the max depth in this lake is. But the bite's already slowed, folks. And for that, I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm going to cast back to where I got several bites. It was probably that same small fish over and over again. But might as well. <sighs> One thing I'm going to do here in a second is tie on a big worm and also get it on a different rod. Because as much as I love my Mach 1 combo, this is a white combo. And that's a fish. Yes, sir. The second hook set. Got him. Got him. Caught him. Don't need to get him a second hook set when he's this small, but I thought he was bigger. When it comes to white rods on, hey, stop it. Stop it. On thumbnails, the camera can't see the white rod. So that's why you hardly ever see me using this combo. Because you can't see it on camera on a thumbnail. So that's why I'm not gonna throw this one a whole lot. Now, I know that I've been catching them on the caffeine shad, but the size is now decreasing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the switch to old grande worm. And that's the, that's the lure that we're gonna continue this video and probably finish this video out on. Actually, I'm gonna make one cast real quick with the cage fighter jig. Not because it's the right, it's the right lure for the area. I just kinda wanna know how deep things are. So this thing falls at what rate? One, two, okay. Basically a foot a second. So I'm gonna flip to the end of the dock here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's about five, four and a half, five feet of water out here on the edge of the dock. Gonna make a flip out to a good casting distance from the shore. Three, four, five. Eh, maybe a little bit deeper out there not a whole lot though and then i'm gonna make what would be a bomb cast from the shore one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. okay nine so about 10 feet out there in the middle so i'll do that periodically with the jig just to uh to know how deep it is now, maybe the jig would be, you know, a smart option. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll switch to that. But I think for now I am going to get to the big worm and come back to the jig if I feel like big worm's not getting big enough bites. Going to go ahead and get myself a cast out there. Peel out a little bit of line. As I let it sink... Now I'm going to go get my nice camera, because it's time to step up this production game. Are we going? There we go. Now one thing I don't have with me right now is my tripod, because I left it in, uh, in Minnesota with my boat. So we got a camera on a tiny little, uh, a tiny little, I guess it's a tripod. Let me show you guys. This right here is what my camera is sitting on. 
and it's kind of precarious I'm not sure if I'm necessarily a fan but it's good enough and it gets that uh, gets that Sony angle you know filming filming stuff for you guys is great I love it but it is a challenge sometimes to get all the camera gear in the right place make sure I get the shot and I'm gonna be honest I'm not feeling a whole lot of grass out here so I think what happens is the the bank slopes down here and then for whatever reason whether it's I, I doubt it's water quality I bet it's just bottom composition the grass doesn't grow very well out there so I'm still going to target my casts towards the the sloping of the bank but just the deepest that I can think that the grass would grow and this here is where the video probably gets a little slow now don't leave don't you dare leave we got a lot of a lot of fun stuff coming you still want to win that giveaway but because it's so hot I've now had to, had to make the transition from covering the bank as fast as humanly possible fishing that edge while the fish were still shallow and in this instance you know feeding actively on, on bait fish around this feeder to now it is hot hot summer we got construction going on over there ruining the vibe ruining the tranquil vibe we had going on come on now somebody out there is building something that's about that's about all north texas is right now is construction 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 you get a neighborhood you get a neighborhood you get a mass plan neighborhood everybody gets a neighborhood oh my goodness it's hot oh my lord oh it's so hot but hey if it's still hot where you are or if it's getting cold afco's got you covered I've been wearing AFCO stuff for, I think, six or seven years at this point. My code TRF2023 gets you 15% off on the website. I'm wearing the, uh, the tactical sun shirt right now. I'm going to put the, the buff on in a few minutes. And uh, they've got jackets. They've got Reapers. And my merch line, Infinite Outdoors, that I just launched last year. I do a lot of stuff with AFCO. And so if you want some good quality AFCO stuff with a cool message behind it about the infinite love of of God, then uh, check out infiniteoutdoors.com. Self, selfish merch plug right there. But if you guys haven't heard about it, that's what it is. It's got a cool message behind it. And I'm not a fan of this low angle, you know? I wish I was looking to you guys up here, but I'm looking, I'm looking at you down there. Oh, it's hot. Holy moly. I need sunglasses on too. It's, it's way too bright to not be wearing sunnies. All right, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to get my sunglasses. Ah, too sunny. Too sunny, folks. People all the time, I'm telling, I just, I, I'm going to keep reiterating this. People all the time, man, I see you catching all these fish all the time. I'm not catching nothing. What's your secret? And my first message, well, if, it's, if it's during this time of year, my first message is, oh, what time are you fishing? And they're like, oh, you know, when I get off work, which is usually, you know, 5 p.m. And my, my answer to that is, brother, you are not fishing early enough. I know some lakes out there, especially in Florida, have like a sunset bite. There's a, there's a, there's a dusk bite or dawn. No, dusk. But, man, especially in Texas, and I think most places that are still hot as heck right now, the morning bite is so significantly better than the, than the evening bite. And I stand by that. Stand by that statement. And so if you are not getting out there to take advantage of it, you may be fishing around good areas, but just not at the right times. And I think I proved that this morning, and I'm, I'm slowly proving that to you guys as I... As I fish, is that a fish? No, there's grass. I had grass and my bait was messed up. As I fish here, y'all can see that it's, it is much more challenging now than it was half an hour ago. And it is already time for the buff. I'm not a huge fan of sunscreen. And the reasoning is because there's just, there's so many harmful 
carcinogens in sunscreen. So I would rather just cover my body up with good SPF clothing than, uh, than wear a sunscreen. But if you guys are out there and you're, you know, health, health nuts, there's one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, nice one. Nice one. Let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go. Get away, get away from the edge of that dock. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Come on now. Come on now, you're a nice one. You're a nice one. Get in here. Get in here. Get in here. I need to get, I, I, I can land you right now. We all are seeing TV magic get made right now. Let you swim. I need to get a good thumbnail image. There we go. Hopefully that was something good. And now get in here, buddy. Now get in here. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, almost landed yourself. Oh, biggest fish of the day on the big worm. Hopefully y'all can see that right there. Man, he had that thing absolutely gagged. He's got it down there. Okay, come on now, man. This guy got it real, real deep. I'm not talking about like in the gills, but he's, uh, or in the, in the crunchers, but he's definitely down there. So I'm gonna go get pliers from the truck. If I was going far from the truck, I'd have my backpack with me and my pliers in it. But as of now, I'm fishing pretty dang close to the truck. And y'all are gonna get a little little tip here on how to get a fish that's deep hooked. So hopefully I can do it with one hand, even though these pliers are old and worn. I'm gonna go ahead and wreck the worm. I always get more worms later. I'm gonna, so as you can see here, the hook is in the bottom of the mouth, kind of in the crunchers, and I can't really get an angle through the mouth to poke the hook out. So I'm gonna go through the gills right here. I'm gonna grab the hook bend, turn it around the best that I can, and poke up. There we go. Release the hook. It is now poked out and pull it out. And that right there is how you save a fish. Beautiful fish right there on the big worm. Thank you, friend. Swims off nice and healthy. And that's what I'm talking about, baby. We got ourselves a little bit of wormy action. Yeah, and this worm is trash. I'm gonna throw it there. I'll, I'll pick that up before I leave, but if I've got a dock, I don't wanna throw it in my pocket, get it all slimy and wet. Let's get ourselves a second worm. I love, I love getting to prove what I'm talking about. Talk about fishing fast and fishing slow, picking apart an area, and it works. How about that? How about the, how about them tigers? Go tigers. Now when it comes to fishing a big soft plastic worm, you know, the, the obvious question is, well, how can the fish get their mouth around it? Like does, does the hook have to be a, a giant seven aught hook, eight aught, 10 aught hook, you know, to fit the worm? Realistically, no, because oftentimes bass will eat from, uh, from the nose, they'll, they'll eat the nose of the bait. And so they don't have to actually suck in the entire thing in their mouth. They just kind of get this part right here. And that's enough usually as long as the hook is turned properly to, uh, to get it in their mouth. Now that fish right there, obviously, if the hook was way down there, he had sucked the whole thing in. So even a, a three pounder like that fish, they can eat a giant worm. I've seen time and time again with the underwater footage that I've gathered over the years, man, fish have a crazy ability to just use water and, and their, their gills to suck something in. I mean, you look at a smallmouth bass and how easily it sucks in a drop shot bait. Largemouth bass are the exact same way. They just filter that water through their gills, you know, suck, in their, suck in their prey. And so don't be afraid to throw a big worm. Now I do throw a bigger hook. This is, this is a, I think a four aught or a five aught. I'm not gonna throw a little little one or two out wide gap on a, a big, big worm like this. So you still gotta match it somehow. And just like with almost every technique out there, I have made a big worms masterclass video, how to fish the giant worms, the big shaky head straight tails. I will leave that video linked down in the video description for you guys who, uh, who haven't seen that video. I try to make instructional videos about everything in bass fishing every, every two to three years. Just kind of make a, make a new iteration of it, a better teaching version of it. Because I'm always learning, I'm always improving as an angler. And uh, I hope you guys are along with me. 
let's see anything else on my on my to-do list to talk about here yeah in terms of in terms of like sponsor stuff i'm not going to do a sponsor ad read but you guys know i have great sponsors here on the channel and uh when it comes to holiday gift shopping you know it's getting up to the fall time we got thanksgiving christmas coming up i say that as it's super hot outside um all my sponsors, or majority of them, have discount codes that are linked down in the video description. So AFCO is TRF2023, Blue Storm Life Jackets, if you want a life jacket for your, your kid, or your, your son, or your daughter as they're fishing their kayak, Blue Storm makes the best ones out there, both uh, regular inflatable and auto inflatable. I've got a discount code for them. I got a discount code for uh, Beatdown Outdoors, the mounts that raise my fish finders on my, on my bass boat. Super awesome company. Um, I got, uh, uh, what do you call it? Pro guide batteries. You want lithium batteries or AGM for your boat. I've got discount codes there. So there's lots of stuff, no matter what kind of angler you have in your family that, uh, they need a gift of some kind. Mock nation is always running, running, uh, sales on their combos on their website. I think they were 25% off for a while. I'm not sure if that's still going on, but I'm sure around black Friday, they're going to have some crazy deals. So support the, uh, the brands that help this channel out. Because again, they, they help me make a living. You guys do as well through watching the videos. But, you know, if, you, if you're going to be buying rods, reels, and tackle anyways, if you could support those brands that support this channel, that would, that would mean the world to me. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's the last item I had in terms of to-do list things to talk about. And man, I got, we got lots of, there's so many turtles around here. And it's a weird, it must be like a soft shell. Yeah, yeah, it's a big soft shell turtle because it's got it's got a slithery looking neck coming out of the water eating eating the, the, the feed from this feeder. Because I can see the big shell underneath the water. It kind of soft shells actually look like uh, look like little little crocodiles, their heads do. So I thought maybe we had crocodiles in this pond, but no we don't. No crocs. <sighs> Just slowly dragging, slowly dragging the worm. Got to put this back on because it's hotter than heck and it's sunny as heck. Oh yeah, I was getting to. I don't like to wear sunscreen because of all the cancer causing materials in them. And so if you guys know of any good sunscreen brands that like you know all natural good product not crazy oily or extra white you know on your skin comment down below i think i think blue lizard was one of them that makes good sunscreen um that's you know carcinogen free and free of all the bad stuff but let me know what you guys use because i would like to, i would like to wear sunscreen more often i just don't like the stuff that's in it but I also don't want, you know, to look like those stereotypical sunscreen kids with a big old blob of white on your nose. <sighs> but definitely my hands, my hands and my legs and my nose get the most burnt of anything. So I'd like to protect those. But if you've never looked, if you've never looked into the sunscreen brands and how nasty the stuff in them is, I'd implore you to do that. All right, enough fishing from this pier here. That rhymed. Don't worry, I'll come back for the worm that's on the, on the dock here. I'm gonna take you guys with me as we continue to walk down the bank. I'm gonna have to set the camera up in the, in the weeds a little bit. How's the lighting? Looking good. Oh my goodness, what a fun morning we had. And we're not done yet, folks. The next big fish we catch, I'm gonna do the comment challenge and the 300,000 subscriber giveaway. So stay tuned, it's coming, coming in hot. Okay, let's stick the camera down here. Let's see what it looks like if I'm here. That's not bad, I'll take that. I'll take that. Cast my cast my cricket out there. Oh geez, we are we are still falling. Okay. It may be a little bit deeper 
along this edge. So that's, that's a good thing I'd say. Beautiful body of water. Like I think, I think a chatterbait and a, and a lipless crankbait out here in the pre-spawn, post-spawn could just be money. Right on the edge of that grass. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say so. Let me restart this clip here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight, eight, eight seconds to fall, and it falls a little slower than the jig. So yeah, it's seven, eight feet out there. Just slowly dragging, dragging my anaconda worm. And if y'all are in need of tackle and you shop at Tackle Warehouse, all of my links down below are affiliate tracking links. And again, that helps the TRF channel continue to be able to grow as well, because man, it is getting expensive to travel all around the country you fill up my truck every two days with gas and so if y'all could uh it doesn't cost you nothing but if you could shop for your tackle going through those links before you make your cart that would be much appreciated and whatever you put in your cart gets uh gets added to my account as well so that's the way that works and it's super helpful super helpful to the brand it's good for the brand all right enough sponsor talk Every, every uncut needs sponsor talk though, because I need stuff to talk about and I need to let you guys know what's going on inside the brand. So I'm never gonna, never gonna shy away from mentioning that sort of thing. But it's time we catch a fish because it's time we give away a mock jacked bait caster. That's what time it is. I just wanna get a hook set right here. I really like, I really like this angle. I'd like to catch one, please. That'd be nice. That would be nice to catch a bass right here. Hopefully you all are enjoying yourselves here, learning a thing or two, especially about the, the transition this time of year between these two types of fishing. If you're, uh, this is not the comment challenge, but if you're watching right now from doing the dishes, folding laundry, vacuuming the house with your AirPods on, let me know down in the comments. Love to know how you guys are watching these uncuts. I know some of y'all put the uncuts on your TV, your smart TV, and you know, while you guys are sitting around You've probably got your uh, your son or your daughter, your little three-year-old watching Uncut right now. Hello, hello kiddos. Thanks for watching. Tell your parents thank you for putting on Tyler's Real Fishing. You know, in, uh, in Proverbs, at least I think it's Proverbs, it says, train your, train your children up in the way they should go and when they're old, they will not depart from it. And that's talking about like the ways of God and, you know, the laws and, and ways he's designed the world. But if you also train a child up to watch TRF, maybe they're going to love bass fishing, you know. Not going not gonna to promise that, but that's at least my hope. And my goodness, folks, where, where do these fish go? That's my question. Are they like just way out there in the middle? That's why live scope this, year is so, this, this time of the year is so helpful. Because after the shallow morning bite, I'm able to, uh, to scope around and really see where they went. Because they are, I don't think they're chasing bait or nothing. They are out, out there in the middle. And not even a slowly dragged worm gets these puppies going. Last cast here. I'm going to go down that grass line. Great. Oh my goodness, it's hot. It's so stinking hot. I can't even feel like, I feel like my, my booty crack is like leaking, leaking sweat. Oh, is that a fish? No, not one. I feel like I've just got sweat pouring down my, my backside. <sighs> hot, hot, hot. 
Well, we got some good grass out there. The worm's getting stuck. That's a good thing. I would rather the worm get stuck than not have any grass at all. That means there's good healthy vegetation for me to pull the worm out of. And you know what? I'm going to make... Oh, uh-oh. I just had one follow me. I just had one follow me. I saw him. I saw the wake. Dang it. He was probably real small. Yeah. Oh, there he is. There he was. There he was. Son of a biscuit. He was right there. And he was small. I was right. I was right, he was small. And that right there is honestly, that, that's, a, that's a cool tip in itself, is, is when you're fishing and you get a bite or maybe you're even live scoping or you just see a fish down there and the fish does not bite it. Like you, you, you saw a fish on sonar, you cast through, it doesn't bite it. Oftentimes by rapidly reeling, you're able to, to cause a reaction strike in that fish that might've been down there checking it out. And if you slowly continue to hop it, that might not trigger him to bite. You might think, oh, he needs to be finessed and slowly shake it. Sometimes just by, you know, hopping it and then reeling it fast and then letting it sink, it all, honestly, it, it, uh, it, it forces that fish to see it going away fast and triggers them into following. And then as soon as you kill it, it falls down and that fish smokes it. So that's exactly what happened there. I started to fast retrieve my worm in and, uh, and that fish ate it. But that's it for this area. Let's go down to the other dock down there. Oh my goodness. I'm so, I'm so hot. Oh. Holy Moses, it's hot. Okay. Oh. This is why I go to Minnesota. If y'all ever wonder Dang, where's Tyler getting all these awesome topwater blow-ups? Beautiful, chunky largemouth, eating his, eating his thunder cricket in grass. Yeah, that's, that's Minnesota for you. That's why I head out there, because the fishing is just bananas. Really, any time from July on, Minnesota fishing is pretty dang fun. And that's why I head out there. All right, there we go. Let's see what she looks like being here. We good here? Yes, we are. I'm gonna cast by this feeder. Even though this feeder hasn't gone off, maybe there's still... I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> A small one. And uh-oh, for you, my friend, you are getting a trip to heaven. Hey, stop it. Stop it. That's good to know. Just like many private lakes, there's a, there's a few on these feeders. I'm gonna go ahead and hang my bait in the water as I go run back to deliver this guy to his, his doom. Oh goodness, there's a four pounder. Can y'all see that in the water? There's a four pounder sitting right there. Right as I leave this dock. Sorry, buddy. There's a four pounder sitting right down there. All right, so there's nice fish in here. They're in here, baby. You just gotta, you gotta land on them. All right, back to the action. Now it's really amazing though, and just goes to show you how even small fish can get the big worm totally down their gullet. Now it catches bigger than average fish usually. It's a bigger bite. Also, somebody's calling me. No idea who that was. They'll leave me a voicemail if it's necessary. All right, just saw a four pounder. I like to catch one of those. But yeah, small fish can get big baits in their mouth. So the big worm doesn't totally eliminate getting bit. But I do think if I cast this thing around long enough, I'm going to intercept with old big, old bagging. But as Jordan Lee would say, we got to find, we got to find us a scoo. We got to get scooed up, baby. Maybe on the shady side of this dock. Not a bad idea. Now, 
one thing I just thought about, I've never quite, I don't think taught, is how long after the bait hits the bottom until I start working it. For me, it's pretty immediate, maybe two to three seconds, but I'm not letting the bait sit down there for 20, 30 seconds before I start hopping and dragging it. It's pretty immediate. And also with the worm, I'm not doing like a hop, 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 like a jig. I'm not shaking it like this. You'll see me do that a ton with the jig. I'm just giving it a slow drag or a slow rise and fall, again, to get that tail to and then fall back down. But I mean, now that I saw one react to it, maybe I, uh, maybe I should do a little bit of a up and then down. And then up and then down. Because I know the, 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 the stronger I pull it up like this, the more the tail is, is getting wiggling. So maybe that's something worth, worth trying out. And on, on, you know, on your body of water, you may have more, more people fishing than I do on this, this PWF lake. So you've really got to actually focus on your retrieve type because you want to be retrieving it in a different way usually than everybody else is. But out here, I don't have to worry as much about that. Still, still some things to, to tinker with. And you know, it's like there will be days when they want it fast, days they want it slow. But on average, with these types of bodies of water, it's just, it's easier to get a bite. So it builds, it builds confidence a lot quicker in your hook set and your abilities and your lure selection that you can go to a public body of water and, and have more success. And I'm wondering why there weren't more fish around this here feeder. There should be. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and move this camera this direction because I'm gonna come stand right down here. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, I, I am not in the frame. I am not in the frame at all. How about this? There we go. Kind of in the frame. Not the best, but... Oh, all right, there we go. Good cast that direction. Set my feet here. Kind of worried. It's not very strong footing on this dirt. Ooh, ooh, there's one. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Reel it in real fast. He just came up to chomp on some bluegills. Just saw him. Right there. About a three pounder. And I would not have seen that guy without polarized sunglasses. Even if it's clear water, I would not have seen that fish. You gotta have your sunglasses on, not only to protect your eyes, but also to see what's going on down there. And I, and I, and I ruined that other cast, I burned it in, made another one because I had seen a fish and that's worth it to me. I can make that other cast some other time. Burn the hands worth two in the bush, as they say whoever they are. And, and you know what, that wasn't even a bird in the hand. That was a potential bird in the hand. Oh, oh I think he's over here now. Yep. Where's he at? I, ju I just saw him underneath this dock here. Oh no. Oh, I got stuck on the dang dock. Oh man. <sighs> My line's probably frayed now. Oh, we're good. This fish has got to bite something. Come on now. Please? Please bite? I guess maybe once he's seen me, even fish on private bodies of water aren't that dumb. All right, back to what we were doing with the castaway out there. I gotta catch, I gotta catch one more nice one in order to do this, this real giveaway. All right.
because I want to give away this mock jacked baby because I am mock jacked up for 300,000 subscribers. I am mock jacked, baby. We've been gaining some serious steam these last few months. Thank you all to all who come from TikTok, from YouTube Shorts, watching the long form content. You guys are, uh, are highly valued here on the channel. Big fans of you guys and y'all who have been here for a long time. But especially those who have just now found the channel because of all my, all my shorts content. I appreciate you guys. You rock. Thank you for joining the team. Thanks for supporting the merch. Thanks for supporting the sponsors. It, it all means a lot. Come on. One more fish. One more. It's so hot. Oh, I'm so ready to go home already. Oh, it's hot. I need water. I need a breakfast taco. I need coffee. I need a lot of things. I need to take a shower. This is why I go to Minnesota. Because by this time in the morning, I've still got my, my sweatshirt, my pants on, maybe two sweatshirts. <sighs> it's so hot. Okay. We're gonna move this camera here to maybe right here as I go. Uh oh, that camera's almost out of battery. Dang it. One cast this way. It's a little backlashy cast. Holy cow. Whoa, I'm way off the frame. Okay, here we go. I'll stand right here. How about it? As it shoots into the shoots into the sky. And this camera has an overheating. See, that's how you can tell how hot it is. This camera here has an overheating symbol. And it's 7.45 in the morning. That is how hot it is. My goodness gracious, folks. Da -da -da, da -da. And I'm noticing once again that as I work my way this way, the grass line gets farther out again because it gets shallower it's not quite as steep of a, of a drop so i've got to make casts that are farther out than i had to make on this side right here and that's just a really simple quick way to learn the contours of a body of water is you know the countdown method's big but also feeling what's down there helps you understand how deep it is feeling all right i, I cast out here and I'm, I'm feeling grass right there so either it's it's grass that's grown higher healthier bottom or it's just shallower in general and usually I go shallower in general um, as opposed to a cast out there where I don't feel much grass for the first 10 or 15 times I hop the worm which means we got a good grass line somewhere out there but even a cast out in the middle here I've had grass the entire time and so I'm gonna slowly work my way left oh well there goes my worm <laughs> Guess that worm was was about done. Get my dang hook back. Hook and wait. But like I was saying, slowly work my way casting this direction out here towards towards the center of the pond to find where that good drop is. Because I think that's where the fish are gonna be. I think they're gonna be as close to that drop as they can be. Oh, and that's another thing about soft plastics and the heat is that the hotter they get, the easier they tear. So that's why I'm keeping my soft plastic in my pocket and not sitting on the bank because if it sat on the bank, it would get direct sunlight. It'd be much hotter, much quicker. All right, there's a cast way out there. I'm assuming once it falls to the bottom, I'm not gonna feel any grass, and if I do, that means this whole pocket here, as you all see from this drone shot, is, uh, is grassy. Which is not a bad thing, it just means I've gotta find the deepest section of it. But yeah, I'm, I'm hopping the worm right now, not feeling any grass. Just open bottom. When I do feel that grass, I can try to replicate that cast and make, make it land near that grass every time. 
I feel like a lot of times with electronics and live scope, we forget about the old slow drag, you know? Just feeling, feeling what's down there the old fashioned way. There it is, there's the edge. All right, and this edge right here is actually much like this one over here. So some, somewhere between here and there, we have a rapid slant up in bottom because the, the grass edge is, is right on the edge up here. All right, folks, this camera right here about to overheat. Probably the last time you'll see this until the outro because I don't really feel like walking back to my truck to get a battery, so it's unreal. Chest mount for me right out. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. <sighs> right after I restarted that clip, I saw about a four pounder cruising the bank. I cast my worm to him. Didn't even have to feel the bite. I saw my line jump and then start to run away. I set the hook and he stole my whole worm. Man, I hate when you have a great opportunity like that. And I don't think I did anything wrong. I waited, I waited for him to eat it. He was swimming with it, you know. I think it's right for me to assume he's got the he's got the whole worm in his mouth, but obviously he just had part of it. So, man. But what I exactly what I did there is I didn't cast directly at him. I cast way past him, and then I reeled the bait in and let it sink right along his path where he was going, almost like it it, it helps the fish to find it himself or herself. Would want to you know misgender nowadays. There's the fish. There's the fish. Oh my gosh! It stole another one! It stole another whole worm. Holy moly. I'm gonna call this fish the, the anaconda bandit. Because it's stealing my worms and it's stealing y'all's uh, Y'all's chance to win this mock jack. Because if I catch this fish, we call this video, we call it a day. We give away a reel to one of you guys. We thank our sponsors, we thank mom and dad, and then we get we get the heck out of here. Go take a shower, because I'm sweaty. But, come on now. Come on now. Let's catch this fish. Hopefully he's still around and he's hungry for a third worm. <laughs> oh my gracious. Holy moly. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping this is that fish. I've kind of got a feeling I've got maybe a little pack of small ones. But because I'm getting so many bites, I'm gonna, I'm gonna de-expose my hook or just barely poke it in. Because I'm trying to get the best hook set possible. How's my GoPro? We're gonna wipe. Wipe it down just in case. There it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's him. That's him. That's him. Oh my gosh. He's under the dock. Give him some slack. Give him some slack. There we go. Fight him. Oh my gosh. That's him. That's him. That's him. Oh my gosh. In the heat. Holy cow. Big one. Uh, my line is kind of frayed. I'm going to get low here on this dock to land him. Yes, sir. Yes. Stinking sir. That right there is biggest fish of the day. Probably close to four pounds. Got a five pound head, but a skinny body. On the big worm. That one right there must have been chasing these bluegills around. Was hungry enough to continue biting even though he stole a few of my worms. Oh, I love you, my friend. You're my favorite part of the day right here. Catching a big old fat Sally. And you'll notice what I did. Fish took me under the dock. Instead of fighting him from up there, I came down here to the dock to get a better vantage point so this fish could not uh, could not break me off underneath. Oh my goodness. You know what, actually? I need to do one thing with this fish real quick. Well, I tried to do a TikTok trend with the fish, but uh, it didn't work, so we're gonna let you go back down to the depths. And that right there, folks, brings us to our 300,000 subscriber Mock Jack giveaway. I wanna say a few words real quick. You know, I've been doing this over a decade, and so to finally reach another milestone like this is huge. We are growing 
10,000 plus subscribers a month, which is just, which is mind blowing to me. Uh, I'm so grateful to you guys, so grateful to God for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I just hope to glorify him the best way that I can. So if you want to win yourself a mock Jack 301, you've got to be subscribed to the channel. Now, there's no way that I don't think I can tell if you're subscribed. So you know what? If you win this thing and, and you cheat, then, uh, then good on you, or bad on you, I guess I should say. But I want you guys to be subscribed here on the channel. If you can turn your notifications on for this channel specifically, you don't have to. I'm, I'm only going to post twice a week. I'm not going to blow up your subscription feed, but uh, I, I really love to have you guys along for the ride. So those two things are things that I'm going to ask you to do, but not require you to win the mock jacked reel. But I am going to require you to comment something. Here on the Uncut series, I have a comment challenge, a part of every video. Usually it's like, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream or favorite color or fishing lure. This time though, it is something that it's maybe sentimental to some of you guys. And that is, what is your favorite fishing memory with somebody else? It could be your favorite memory with your grandpa, with your dad, with your sister, maybe uh, you and some fishing buddies, you know, fishing a pond one day, you all had your, your best days ever, you all caught personal bests. Or if you don't have a good story that comes to mind, who's the next person that you're going to take fishing to try to teach them the techniques that you have learned yourself Yourself. Here on the channel, my goal is to help you guys become better anglers, and so I want you guys to, to, to be along for the journey with me, not just watching the videos, but also in real life. I want to meet you guys, I want to get to know you, and I want to pass along my desire to help fishing grow and to help more people catch fish, and I want you guys to be a part of that. So again, comment your favorite fishing memory or who you're going to take fishing next and what you hope to teach them. I don't need your subscribe, I don't need your notifications, that is great, I'm going to ask for that, but if you just want to win this reel, this brand new Mock Jacked, again, I don't even think the Mock Jacked is out to the public yet. That's how cool this, this giveaway is, uh, and that's how much I appreciate you guys, is that I want you guys to comment your favorite fishing memory down below. Again, all my tackle and stuff from this uncut will be linked down in the video description. I love this series because I get to just go bass fishing and have the cameras totally uncut, and I get to fish some cool places like Germ... Jermar, Jermar, however you pronounce it, lake here in Van Alstine. If you want to join Private Water Fishing, I will leave the link down below. Let them know I sent you. My name's Tyler. We'll see you guys next time on the next episode of Uncut or something else or 100 docks or 100 ponds. We got a lot going on. See you guys around.